Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the Inland Northwest. Hockey, fast-paced action, finesse. Some play the game, fewer yet master it. Hockey in Spokane, Washington has been around for many years with multiple teams and faces. Stars from those teams have come and gone, but thanks to the Old Timers Hockey Organization, the hockey talent lives on in the Inland Northwest. Carl Cirillo played a major part in bringing the Old Timers Association to Spokane. A past hockey star in his own right, Carl began playing in Spokane in 1948 for the Spokane Flyers. Well, there was uh, John Dolan and Jerry Foley and myself, we bowled on a bowling team. Uh, one of the years when the Comets were here and uh, we talked about it and then we called all the fellows that lived in town and uh, I think we had about <clears throat> oh probably six fellows turned out first time so we called a second meeting and we had a few more and then on the third time we had quite a few there was about 12 or 14 I guess the organization couldn't exist without people like Tom Hodges, a former player, coach, and owner, a self-proclaimed offensive defenseman. We usually have two or three out-of-town tournaments every year, three, you know, two or three or four, and, and then have one here each year, usually in March, and uh, play a three-day tournament and uh, different categories of teams. We have... Uh, uh, of the old group, the real, uh, you know, I would say from the 50, age 50 on, we have a, a pretty good sized group now of players, but uh, each year we're going to be losing the odd one. <laughs> Spokane's hockey has enjoyed a varied past. The city's first artificial ice arena, the Elm Street Arena, played host to many hockey games and served the city for nearly four decades. Hundreds of fans would brave the cold and damp of the arena to watch their favorite team. The, the hockey team owned the rink, so it was financially a good, probably a good deal for them. But no, it was, uh, they never planed the ice <clears throat> in those days. That was before the Zamboni, so they just flood. The ice would just keep building up till it got really thick and rough, and then they'd cut it down once, uh, halfway through the season. They'd shave it down with this plane they had they'd bring in from out of town. <laughs> and then they'd go. So the ice wasn't very good. The boards weren't very good. The uh, screens at the end were raggedy. And it was a tough old building to play in. In 1954, the Memorial Coliseum, with nearly triple the seating capacity of the old arena, became the new home for the Spokane Flyers. Oh, yeah, we had great fans, always did. Uh, right from the uh, opening game in the Coliseum after we left the old arena, where we were limited to a couple thousand fans is all the seats there were that when we opened in the Coliseum in 1954, there was uh, pretty well a sellout the first night and it was like that for many years. It just every, it was a thing to do on Saturday night. The crowd was different. They were uh, generally a dress up crowd. You know, people dressed up and went to hockey game. And one of the funny things that happened in the new building was when we moved in there, they, the floor is dark green and they just flooded the ice and uh, didn't paint it white like you normally do, and and so the ice was green, and uh, was a big advantage for us for a couple of years, because the visiting goalies couldn't, you know, they had trouble seeing the puck, and uh, of course our, our goalies were used to it because we practiced there and everything. The game of hockey in Spokane has had many faces and highlights. The team's name changes and the myriad of players reflect its varied past. Spokane's professional hockey reached a pinnacle in 1970 when the then Spokane Jets became the first team from the United States to ever win the Allen Cup, a cup signifying senior amateur hockey supremacy in Canada. Spokane would then go on to win three more Allen Cups in 1972, 76, and in 1980. Our league here, the Western International League, was a, a high, a very good quality league. There was a lot of good hockey in the Allen Cup in Canada. Was a, is a Canadian trophy. It was right on the Stanley Cup is the National Hockey League. The Allen Cup was next. The Memorial Cup was junior hockey, and they were the trophies. And uh, the competition was really good. 73-year-old Vern Nisha first took the ice as a Spokane Spartan in 1947 as a goalkeeper. 
After retirement in 1950, he remained in Spokane and eventually became involved in the Old Timers organization at its inception. Vern currently has the distinction of being the organization's oldest active member. I like to do it. I played on the coast. I played in San Francisco and in Los Angeles and on Vancouver Island. Uh, I played my minor hockey in Canada. And when I came to Spokane, uh, I liked it. It's every bit as good as any place on the coast, so I stayed here. Nobody used masks. Nobody thought much of using a mask. And uh, the uh, idea is at that time that a mask would uh, uh, interfere with your sight lines too much. And uh, it wasn't until the advent of the slap shot that they started thinking about masks. Well, not really. It's kind of an easy night. It's uh, uh, a fun night. There's not a lot at stake, and then you go out and have an enjoy yourself. What do you think about Well, just not embarrassing as that. <laughs> Tonight, that is, anyway. Yeah. I used to get nervous though, all the time. Spokane's old Memorial Coliseum, home for over 40 years to many Spokane hockey teams, saw its last old-timers hockey action on a special evening, hosting some past National Hockey League All-Stars, including appearances by Rocket Richard, Guy Lafleur, and Frank Mahovlich. For many, the evening capped a long history with an old building, and at the same time, brought on some questions for the future. I think that if, if not uh, there, there'll be... Uh... Uh, other rinks come up in the in the future, uh, whether it be uh, in the city limits here or out in the valley or wherever, whoever builds one, I think uh, we'd be tempted to move our organization where we could get more ice time. While the now old Coliseum is being dismantled and the new Coliseum is getting its final touches, Carl clears out the old locker room and reminisces. These are the ones that uh, they're going to, I'm sure these are the ones that let us put up in the, uh, in the uh, new building. These are all the championship teams, uh, 48, 49, and then 49 and 50 when we won two U.S. national championships. The first Allen Cup team is right here. You can see the short haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Those are the ones that were probably... Then we had the Spokane Chiefs when they won the uh, Memorial Cup the first time. So we've had our share of the nice wins in this Coliseum. The future of the Old Timers organization may be in doubt, but as long as there is hockey, there will always be former players willing to pick up a stick and give it a go. My, this is my personal opinion. I would like the old timers to be able to do more for minor hockey than we are able to do right now. We uh, don't have the <coughs> financial backing to uh, help minor hockey. Uh, the, uh, the lack of ice in Spokane is becoming critical. Uh, and uh, but. I think maybe uh, not too far down the road that will be uh, rectified. Uh, other than that, we have a pretty active organization and uh, uh, it should continue for quite a number of years. If you have a topic for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS TV. 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.